Well, Pastor Rick, welcome back from South Africa. Thank it's good you. to have you back. It is good uh, to be back. Safe and sound and Indeed. somewhat rested, <clears throat> though probably still recovering from what the nine hour time difference, 10 yeah. hour time difference. Yeah. I had a good night's sleep last night, good. which is good. That's yeah. good to hear. First one in a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, even more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, church, welcome to another episode of Living by the Book. I'm excited for this one because I do think it's a fairly common question. I think it'll take a little bit of uh, nuancing, but the, the general question is, how do I love someone that I don't really like? How do I love someone that I don't really like? Is this a? Ma- I mean, are you telling me something here? I I don't know. <laughs> look, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have to have a talk with you likeable. later. I am like I'm gonna have to have a talk with you later. By a I, I just sliver want the... of the population. I am likable. <laughs> <clears throat> there's there's someone out there for everybody, right? Yeah, right. That's what they say. No, I you know it is interesting that you have a variety of levels, uh, whereby we relate to people. Some of those levels are, and the most significant ones are spiritual sure right and then there are temperamental levels there are personality levels there are you know all kinds of different ways that we relate to other people based on our interests their interests their personality style our personality style even unfortunately in some cases their appearance mm-hmm. and there are some people that you like immediately because they're attractive mm-hmm. physically mm-hmm. and other people that you know you don't right. care for them that much because you're uncomfortable around them because th- their lack of beauty makes you mm. uncomfortable. I mean, there are so many different potential reasons why a person yeah. may not like somebody else. Right. From character issues to the superficiality of yeah. just general appearance. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the I think one of the things that we have to uh, come back to is, is that um, godliness does not, favor some people over another Mm -hmm. the there are some people for whom it is more difficult for me to enjoy their presence Mm -hmm. it's a very nice way of saying that That, yeah (laughs) it's more difficult to enjoy their presence i like that well Uh, and that's what and and that and and but that's on me that's not on that person that's on me sure and i always feel ashamed when i find myself prejudice against someone right. because either they're awkward or they they uh, pry. Mm-hmm. In other words, they haven't gained the right to know how something in my life is. Sure. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe a lack of self-awareness. Yeah, yeah. The lack of self-awareness or yeah. whatever. You're just kind of awkward. And, yeah. and you know, I, I have a variety of resources mentally that mm-hmm. I'm able to deflect and <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> make them think I've answered their question, but they, I actually have I not. Now I'm wondering, how, how often does he do this to me? Like, yeah, yeah, how, many, how, many of, how many of my questions have gone unanswered, and yet I've walked away thinking, oh man, that was a great yeah, answer. That's right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I, I just think of God and, and the, the, the indiscriminate way that mm. he lavishly loves mm-hmm everyone who is mm-hmm. unworthy mm-hmm. of his slightest attention sure and he lavishly loves us and that kind of directs me to um, step up and say i i am loved by god mm. despite how awkward i am sure. how insensitive i am unattractive i am <laughs> and he cares for me yeah i need to be godly mm in the way that I respond to other people. Mm-hmm. Now, there are people who have hurt us deeply. Mm-hmm. There are people who have taken things from us that can never be restored. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are people who drive wedges within our family mm-hmm. that make it difficult to care for them. Yeah, I, I think of somebody who has been maybe physically abused by... A parent or a step right. parent or right. a sibling or a, or whatever, and you know I don't I don't think it's necessary for you to feel it in it incumbent to be buddy buddy and chummy and right. you know right. uh, let there's, bygones there's a, be bygones there's, there's you know there's wisdom kind of involved in that right there is, not putting yourself there in is. a situation where you're going to receive more harm right right um, but in those kind of cases my relationship to that person should be redemptive. In other mm-hmm. words, I'm, I'm striving to represent Christ to them mm-hmm. 
with a purpose that God will work in their hearts, in their lives, to bring conviction of their sin mm -hmm. and, and, and reconcile them to God. So mm -hmm. my, my motivation for my relationship with them is redemptive. Mm -hmm. And the more difficult, <clears throat> the more difficult it is for me to enjoy someone, the more glory goes to God when I treat them favorably, mm -hmm. properly, mm -hmm. civilly, and even warmly. Because I know that those things are not from me. Right. Those things are really right. being accomplished by God through right. me. Right. But how many of us, when we boil down the value of our interactions with others, really allow it to be essentially about properly representing God and his love for other people? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're... they're you know, whatever we do, we do it to the glory of God. We relate to other people to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, we can't afford to give ourselves passes on the opportunity to bring God greater glory mm -hmm. by doing the hard thing of relating to someone that we may not naturally enjoy mm -hmm. or appreciate. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's where the veracity and the authenticity of our faith becomes something that is placed on display. Hmm. If not to the person, for I would not suggest that you ever say to a person, I don't really like you. Yeah, right. I'm relating to you because I'm going to bring glory to God. Right. Well, you've just nullified totally. the ability yeah. to bring glory to God right. by your saying that. Right. Um, <clears throat> so the only one who may know what you're doing is God himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you, of course. So there would be that camaraderie between you and God as mm -hmm. you relate to somebody that's difficult for you mm -hmm. to care for or like. Now, is that would that be is that fake? No. I mean, is that is that you know? no? It's motivation. It's okay. what motivates you. Okay. Is it self indulgence, mm -hmm. or is it genuinely mm -hmm. the glory of God? Right. Right. So right. Okay. because yeah. it's not self indulgent, does not mean it's fake. Right. Right. In fact. If you want to, you could probably argue the opposite, hmm. that when a relationship, when a relationship is self-indulgent, right. that's when it is fake. Right. Because you're, the reason you're doing it is because you're getting enjoyment from it. Right. right. It's not really about the other person. Right. Um, or about God and his glory. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are people that um, I have encountered in my past who are prickly and thorny and you know, sure. the, 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 the kinder you try to be to them, the more, uh, I don't know, the word is irascible. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but that's the word that just came to mind. That, 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 uh, okay, everybody, prickly. pull out your pull out your dictionary. <laughs> I'm going to pull uh, mine start, out. It starts with the letter I. I think it's I-R-R-A-S-C-I-B-L-E. Yeah, it, sure. it, it's, uh, it's Look tough. it up for yourself. I, uh, uh, I, I want to <laughs> check it because I don't want to be corrected. Um, <laughs> But, you know, they, they, they just become more difficult to live with. It's right. like, you're not going to treat me nice. Right. You know, like what the do you nicer think? you are, the more they walk yeah. over you. Yeah. 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 Well, not even just walk over, but the more prickly and, hmm. and um, you know, the, um, you know, you look at it and um, I don't it know how to spell it. I-R-A-C. It's maybe no less. Oh, there it is. Just one R, sorry, one yeah. R, I-R-A. Easily provoked to anger, very irritable. It works. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Well, that nice. So that was the <laughs> idea. It's just they become more irritable, more prickly, more difficult to love. So yeah. the, mo the more you try to show them love, the mm -hmm. more they don't want it. And mm -hmm. they, you know, they, right. you're not going to love me. Right. Kind of a thing. And you go, wow. <laughs> yeah. So do you, are you, do you, uh, are you new <clears throat> to those people in the hopes that it will have the opposite effect? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get real nasty, and then they just yeah, kind of melt. Yeah, and that's, right, real, that's right. It's real nice. No, but you know, it, 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 there are all kinds of people out there. Yeah, and you know, just naturally, not everyone mixes. Yeah, and that's true in the issue of racialism. Mm -hmm. People tend to flock together with people like themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that's not only with basis on the basis of race. Or ethnicity, but also on the basis of educational level, on the basis of interests, mm -hmm. 
like guys who like to play golf sure tend to find each other sure uh, like shooting and guns they tend to find each other right knitting and quilting and they <laughs> I don't know how many guys like that, but let's go. Let's use the ladies here. <laughs> they try to find each other, right? Uh, I have no idea where that came from. But anyway, it's a subconscious slip. I think someone here doesn't want to admit that he likes. Oh, uh, interestingly, <laughs> interesting. A little factoid. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> that I uh, cross stitched several things, um, projects uh, in in when I was in seminary. It just, I found it relaxed me. So I really, I cross stitched. Yeah. That's, that's how you know that seminary has a negative impact on a person <laughs> when it, it literally drives them to cross stitch as yeah, a means yeah. of I psychological relief. Pretty cool things though. I, <laughs> I yeah, love it. Yeah. But no, anyway, it's, they, they it's, try to find each other and yeah. people that aren't like you, you yeah. kind of, right. Not just, necessarily avoid, but right. you, you don't have much in common yeah. with. And, and yet there are real character issues where a person seems to lie a lot. Uh-huh. or a person who has a background that makes you nervous or mm-hmm. a person who um, is um, uh, ill-tempered where people just don't like to be around them. Right, sure. Right? Yeah. Or indulgent in sin of one way or another. I feel, you know, like for wives who have husbands who are alcoholics. Yeah, sure. Um, they don't like their husband, particularly when he's drunk. Yeah. Sure. And yet they're around them. And what do they do? Right. You know, so it, it's not always easy. There's always a level of grace that is necessary. Um, I think what I have sought to do is avoid drawing a conclusion that's final, that I don't want to be around this person mm-hmm. or I will not like this person, mm-hmm. but remain open-minded mm-hmm. and constantly seek to provide an opportunity for God's spirit to do a work that would bring you an opportunity to bring sure. glory to God in the way you respond to them. Sure. Treat them. Sure. You know, the scripture in James chapter two talks about, hold your faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ with an attitude of personal favoritism. Do not do that, mm-hmm. he says. Mm-hmm. Do not hold your faith valuing some people and dismissing other people um, and you know the um, dishonor that we pay to people based on some criterion that we identify mm-hmm. as making that person worthy of me right um, becomes a form of pride and self indulgence or uh, self aggrandizement that makes you feel better mm-hmm. um, and then um, there's a, a need to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. But if you show partiality in verse nine, you're committing sin mm-hmm. and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Mm-hmm. So, you know, God would have us love our neighbor. He commands us, love your enemy, love your brother. Right. Uh, so there is that responsibility that we have to love those that yeah. we may not like. Okay. I've okay. talked to some women who say, Pastor Rick, I feel so guilty. And I say, why is that? I love my children. I just don't like them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because they're so naughty or, oh, man. or un- yeah. unruly or whatever. Irascible. Yeah, yeah. they're irascible. <laughs> Rascally irascibility. Uh, but, you know, I say, it's okay. You know, I realize right. that they're, they're a challenge to us. For sure. But love them. Yeah. Truly love yeah. them. Yeah. And uh, the likability meter goes up and down with right. children. Yeah. yeah they sure. go to sleep and you're seeing them sleeping. Right. And, and they're you like go like and look at precious them. little angels. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. you just For look sure. at them. For sure. And that was an interesting thing because my, my, um, my wife tells the story about when her children, our children, were mm-hmm. like 10, 11 years old, uh, b- between like, let's say, 4 and 11 mm-hmm. years old. Mm-hmm. Um, that she had gotten so frustrated and so tired mm-hmm. of constantly correcting, constantly yeah. uh, chastising them, that she had gotten to a place where she she said, I, I didn't like them. Yeah, I, I sure. didn't like my kids. Sure. I felt so bad. And then she picked up a newborn from another family. Yeah. And she was looking at it. And, oh, how precious, how right. sweet, how precious. Right. And she said, this little precious bundle mm-hmm. has every characteristic that that right. 10 year old right. has right 
They've just not found the way to express it. Yeah, for sure. And the 10 year old has just as much preciousness associated mm -hmm. with them as mm -hmm. this newborn does. Mm -hmm. And she goes, it revolutionized mm -hmm. the way I looked at my children. Yeah. And the preciousness that they truly possessed mm -hmm. is, is constant. Yeah. And it, yeah. it rebuked her, it convicted mm -hmm. her. She repented and confessed right. and came back and, you know, right. had a better attitude. Right. You know, but it, it is tough. It's, it's a yeah. challenge. Yeah. Uh, we need grace yeah. for these things. Yeah. Uh, the congregational members that seem to always find the problem, you know, <laughs> sure. in your sermon or sure. in what you've done or decisions sure. you've made, you, sure. they're all out there, yeah. you know, and, and you hear from them and you, you, you don't want to have the attitude when you get an email or you see them coming and, ugh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what am I going to have to endure this time? Right. You want to welcome them and say, right. I love you. What is it that you're, what is your observation this time? Let me yeah. see if I, it would be helpful. Yeah. You want to have that kind of a large heart. Yeah. Yeah. That isn't so, you know, you know, like what was the Grinch, the Seuss character the, right. that had right. such Grinch, a yeah. tiny yeah, heart. His heart was so three tiny. sizes too small yeah, or something. Yeah, three sizes yeah. too small, something like right. that. You, you want to have a magnanimous, mm -hmm. um, generous open heart because God in loving us has demonstrated that kind of heart. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it's not based on worthiness. Right. Right. It's despite our unworthiness. Right. He loves right. us. He's kind to us. Yeah. He favors us. He welcomes us. Right. And of course, what he is able to do uh, with us in Christ. Yeah. But, you know, I think godliness, godliness, godliness mm. needs to be something that drives us as we yeah. seek to relate to other people. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's helpful. It, so if I, you know, if I could summarize, it seems like the key is to be estimating everyone correctly or accurately, right? right? right. It seems, it sounds like we can, we can get that attitude of, I don't like this person, or that person, if we're thinking too highly of ourselves mm -hmm. or, or if we're thinking selfishly, we're thinking, right. you know, how do they benefit or bless me? Um, if we're if we're estimating the other person rightly, kind of you know the example of your children, this person has inherent value as an image bearer, as someone created by God who is loved by God. Um, rather rather than you know focusing on you know the the qualities about them that we we uh, you know wrongly value or rightly value, we need to realize we need to view them as God views them essentially. Right. 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 Uh, and then it also seems like the the big the big key is is keeping that God centered perspective of you know, my relationships are ultimately about and for God, not mm -hmm. about and for myself, right. right, and for the other person. Right, and even the issue of relating to those who are wicked, mm -hmm. yeah, that their eternal destinies right. could have a direct effect. Your treatment of them, your openness to them, your willingness to love them mm -hmm. could have a direct effect upon their eternal right. destiny. Right. God may use that. Right. very thing right. in order to draw them to Christ. Right. Um, and um, so, you know, we may justify ourselves, oh, that person has sinned. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with them. They're, right. They're sinful. Right. Well, I am too. You yeah. are too. Yeah, for sure. Um, but our sin has been forgiven. Yeah. By Christ. Right. Theirs has yet to be. Right. But could be. Yeah. And you and could be a part of that. could be yeah. as we are now. Yeah. And don't just prognosticate into forever right. Right. that they're going to be the way they are yeah. when God's grace may radically transform them as he has us. Right. Um, and that keeps you from becoming judgmental toward people that you look at and go, yeah, you know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not interested in them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that's helpful. No, that's, that's really helpful. I, and I appreciate that because it is, it is such a, a pastoral issue. You know, I'm thinking about the context of a, of a church that's, that's one body, one people, right. uh, you know, that, that the Bible speaks about the unity that's meant to be in the body. And that unity requires that every single person is, is exhibiting that neighbor love towards each right. other person and is dying to themselves, seeking the best of others. And I think when we're doing that, we'll find that those, you know, those, those, uh, likes, right. The, oh, I don't like this person will probably very quickly dissipate yep. because we're thinking rightly about right. things. Yeah. And I, and I would say, uh, to all of us, don't be that person <laughs> that's hard to love. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, all of us say, wow, that wouldn't be me. It's always somebody else. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's always yeah. somebody else. Sometimes I have to remind myself that I, 
I know that I'm that person to somebody. Right. Somebody out there doesn't like me. That's and they right. probably have a, a fairly legitimate reason. Or, <laughs> you know, exactly. They probably do. So it is, you know, it, it is a good reminder to to say, hey, I'm not, I'm not and, the bees and, knees, and as they say. And as somebody confronts you, because we've had to do that here in the church, yeah, sure, where people have been overly aggressive and pushing an agenda or a point of view mm-hmm. or something, mm-hmm. and we've had to go to them and say, hey, you need to back off, people are finding it difficult to be around you because they know what they're going to get, right. right? When they're around you, they're no, you, you need to back off and, and not be that person who is thorny, prickly, yeah. inserting yourself into right. other people's affairs right. where you haven't earned the right to do that right. and so on. Yeah. You know? yeah. And if you are ever talked to about that, don't be so defensive of mm. yourself as mm-hmm. to say, I couldn't be faulty. Yeah. Well, that's so overestimating. Like if somebody comes to me, I, I want to be, oh, I'm the pastor of the church. I can't have a flaw. Well, right. how stupid is that? Yeah, for sure. Well, we don't want anybody to have that kind of an attitude mm. that presupposes they're above right. um, having flawed relational abilities right you know we all want to be able to exhort one another encourage one another yeah just work on not being the person that is difficult for other people to be around yeah you know just um i i do that every day try to work on it (laughs) avoid being the person that people don't want to be around sure well i like being around you you. that's why why i like sharing it's like that's That's why i like sharing a wall with you yeah that's right it's (laughs) it's uh i'm less irascible yeah you're less irascible Uh, amen amen church be less irascible this week. That is our our preview. <laughs> now, I you know, church. We I hope I it would be my hope, and I know it's Pastor Rick, Pastor Rick's hope that that you would all know that we both like you and love you, and we're Ooh, just man. grateful for that you're part of our church. We hope that this video has helped you. As always, we are available if you have more questions about this issue or follow ups or maybe a, a very unique situation that you'd love to talk through. We're always available. Anyone on the staff is available to you. Uh, we do hope that this video has blessed you. Yeah. We'll see you next week on another episode. Of living by the book. Take care. Bye.